Welcome to our session this morning. My name is Marge Leahy. I'm uh, with the Coca-Cola Company. I'm Director of Health and Nutrition Sciences there. And it's my pleasure to co-chair this great session this morning with John Milner. So the session name is Strategies to Optimize the Impact of Nutritional Surveys and Epidemiological Studies. And to give you a little background on the genesis of this session, and this session is sponsored by the ILSI um, International Life Sciences Institute. And ILSI is a great organization that's a tripartite structure with um, ac um, academic scientists, government scientists, and industry working together with the goal to improve human and environmental health, safety, and well-being around the world. So ILSI is a global network. There are 15 branches globally. And this session is sponsored by um, ILSI North America, the Carbohydrate Committee. As you can see, there's a number of different committees within ILSI North America with caffeine, carbohydrates, conflict of interest, dietary lipids, energy balance, flavonoids, food and chemical safety, food microbiology, food value decisions, fortification, low calorie sweeteners, protein, and sodium. All of these are very important and timely topics where we all work together to really get to the truth of the science. So the ILSI North America Technical Committee on Carbohydrates is sponsoring this session. And um, the Carbohydrate Committee addresses scientific issues related to the function and use of carbohydrates. And we want to facilitate dialogue and um, share science to improve awareness and understanding of carbohydrates and their health effects. So one of the goals of our committee is to enhance production of reliable objective evidence for use in developing dietary guidance for the public along with other important applications. So with that, the LC Carbohydrate Committee identified this very important area of epidemiologic um, studies and really looking at study designs, what are the issues, how can we improve science, um, how can we communicate the um, findings reliably so that the, um, this work can be used to better public policy as well as our understanding and dietary guidance. So uh, the Carbohydrate Committee members and advisors are listed here, um, member companies. I want to acknowledge our academic advisors who are just phenomenal folks in helping us really shape our programs and critical questions, and that's Julie Miller-Jones with St. Catharines University as our academic advisor, and our government liaison is Dave Klerfeld at the USDA. So with this, it's my pleasure to introduce John Milner, and I think for many of us, John Milner needs no introduction, but I think there's a few newer folks, so we will do an introduction. And John is currently the director and senior scientist at the USDA Beltsville Human Nutrition Center. And uh, from 2000 to 2012, he was chief of the nutrition science research group of the Division of Cancer Prevention at the National Cancer Institute. John has an illustrious background, which I'm going to um, suggest that you all can read. So I'm not going to go through all of that. Good. However, I do want to recognize some achievements of John's, and that is he's being awarded the Albion Award here um, at the um, EB meetings this year. So this is really fabulous for public service. And also he's been elected as a fellow of the ASN. So. It's a young fellow. Young, young fellow, exactly. <laughs> so thanks, John. Thank you. 
Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our, I think this is the 16th uh, setting like this. Uh, what an interesting time we've had over the years with multiple topics. So, uh, welcome you to our session today. We have an incredibly interesting topic uh, that we'll be chatting about from various types of perspectives. I guess I need to give my conflict of interest uh, page as well, uh, and I certainly have to start out with the, uh, the first one, grants and research support. I don't have any at the moment, and I'm certainly looking for any kind of donation, so uh, I suspect some of you are in the same boat, but clearly our center has uh, a lot of external support as well as internal. I am on the OC Global Board. I am on the uh, IFIC Board. I serve on the McCormick Science Institute Board. Uh, I think that's all of them, but I, I have no financial gain from any of those. It is a purely love of heart, and I think most of you in this room know that my passion is promoting nutrition research and finding out its importance in overall health. Saying that, I think we need to start thinking about this session today and the information that is before us. And I put a, a couple of slides together. This is actually out of uh, the clinicaltrials.gov, and you can gather this information or any other that you might want on ongoing studies. But I think this is a clear evidence that we've got a, a mounting amount of information that relates to clinical studies. And if you actually then build on top of that all the preclinical studies, we've got a wealth of information. And sifting through all that information is certainly one of the challenges that we have today. I should point out that that information is not coming only from the United States. There are about uh, 5,500 clinical studies that relate to nutrition that are found out throughout the world. Clearly, the United States and Canada uh, and Europe are among the leaders, but there are certainly significant contribution being made by other p people in other parts of the world. This is an interesting challenge because, in fact, combining some of that information across country can lead to some spurious uh, conclusions, we'll say. And so it's a new challenge that we certainly need to think about is how we integrate information across uh, various locales. When we start looking at that data, I think we, we have to start thinking, gosh, there's a fair amount of variability out there. And I was happy that many of you may be aware that David Allison actually has a weekly update that many of us receive. And I just have it, uh, I guess about a week ago when I was looking at the update, I thought this will be a nice slide to show here. Because in fact, it presents uh, some of the mixed feelings that we have out there, the perceptions, and how, pray tell, could the study turn out to be different than what we believe. And these are a few examples where uh, the, are clinical trials, unintended consequences of limiting sugary drinks, to soccer didn't do anything for weight, to resveratrol didn't do anything in obese people all issues that we might have thought would have actually turned out just the opposite. And so then the real question is, that how do we integrate that information? And how do we understand that information? And being formerly from the National Cancer Institute, I thought, I need to show you one diagram, maybe two diagrams, that gives you a little idea of the complexity of this issue. And being someone that worked in cancer, we often identified the RAS gene as something that was associated with proliferation and an increase in cancer risk. You can draw a simple diagram, as I've done over there, cell, RAS mutation, and tumor. But not everybody who has a RAS mutation gets a tumor. And not all tumors have RAS, muta uh, have RAS mutations. So then you have to draw a, more, a little more complex diagram to show what are the pathways that are really being modified by a change in RAS. It clearly gets more complex. But that's not the end of the story, as Paul Harvey would have said. This is maybe a little bit more of the end of the story, the crosstalk that occurs across the multiple pathways. 
And I submit to you that it's probably one of the issues that we need to be talking about even at, in this session is the individuality in response and how all this crosstalk is influencing the biological response that we see. Well, we have a star lineup today to share with you some thoughts about how we're going to deal with data and how we're going to interpret that, that data. Our uh, first speaker will be uh, Dr. Barbara Steeman, uh, formerly at FDA. Are you still at UC Davis? You're still there, aren't you? Yeah, well, whatever. We'll give you your title there. Um, we'll then follow up with statistical uh, strategies uh, by Stanley Young, and then uh, Kevin Dodd is going to tell us about convenient untruths. Uh, Kathleen Tucker is going to give us some in, uh, interesting insights into assessing usual intakes. The Bayesian method is going to be addressed by Robert Matthews. And then we'll end up with David Allison telling us some simple steps to improve uh, our interpretation of data. And then we'll end up with a panel discussion where you can ask lots of questions. Our goal is, in fact, to have each speaker with about 27, 28 minutes of time, giving everyone a chance to ask one or two questions, if you want, to, not everybody, but one or two questions to be asked after each presentation. And then uh, from there, we'll come to the panel discussion where you can ask more of those questions. 